how much money was in your dad's account? I would have been surprised to hear those words even if they were spoken in my everyday life. However, he said those words to me after my father's funeral. My father passed away, and it was only a few hours after the funeral. I was surprised that my husband brought up such a topic at that time. But I had been thinking about divorcing him recently. My father, who had passed away, also told me to break up with such a man. I decided in my heart to cut ties with this man. When I said there was $4 million in it, he seemed uninterested but fidgety. How many years did he think we had been together? I knew he was after the money of my father, who was a wealthy man. That's why my father was wary of him. Normally, I wouldn't have told him how much money was in the account. But I told him this time because I thought he would make a mistake. As expected, when I woke up the next day, he was not in the house. My cash card was gone, and in its place was a divorce paper with his name already filled in. I confirmed that he was not in the house, and while humming a tune, I wrote my name on the divorce paper and locked the door with a chain. My name is Amelia. I think I've lived a relatively affluent life since I was a child, having a wealthy father. I went to a private school, and I started working part-time when I became a college student. I started the part-time job not for money but for social studies. However, my wealthy father never spoiled me. If I didn't study properly, I couldn't go out on vacation even on holidays, and if I got a bad grade on a test, I couldn't go out on vacation during the long vacation. It was a family that was thorough about studying. On the other hand, my father was not just strict with me, but he was also a very kind father as long as I studied and got good grades. On holidays, he took me to the mountains and taught me various things, so even in junior high school, I could set up a tent by myself and split firewood safely. When we went to the sea, we challenged ourselves to clam digging and diving, and my father not only played with me but also challenged me to various things. If I was going to play, I had a strong desire to learn something else, so I got various qualifications from a young age. I got a license for a large vehicle, of course, and I also got a boat license. I borrowed a cruiser from an acquaintance and took my father and mother on board. Because my father was wealthy, there were many people who wanted to get close to me, regardless of gender. I was tired of it, so I didn't tell my friends much about my father or the fact that I had many licenses. At a matchmaking party organized by a friend who knew how I felt, no one except the organizer knew about my father or me, so I was able to participate in the party without hesitation. The other women were all beauties, such as nurses, receptionists at major companies, and models, so I was relieved to see that the men's eyes were fixed on them rather than me. In the middle of all this, there was a man who shared my taste in movies. His name was Nolan. He was three years older than me and worked as an accountant for a major company. He wasn't interested in me at first, but when we talked about our hobbies, he invited me out for coffee after the party. He said, I couldn't really talk about it when everyone was around, but would you like to go to a cafe? I accepted his invitation. When we talked about movies at the cafe we went to after the party, he seemed surprised that I was more of a movie buff than he thought. Nolan said, I didn't think you watched that many movies. I didn't expect you to watch SFX either. He was surprised, but soon smiled and said, the others said it would be better to choose a woman based on her occupation or appearance, but I still want to date a woman who has the same hobbies as me, he said that. He must have been more talkative because he had been drinking. He immediately realized what he had said and said, oh, forget it. You might think I'm a frivolous man for saying I want to date someone so soon, but I've never had a girlfriend before. He blushed as he said it, and I thought he looked very cute. So I asked him, shall we meet again like this? He smiled brightly and made a promise to meet again. Since I work from home, it was easy to match his schedule. I said, if I want to take a day off, I'll rearrange my work schedule myself. We started dating regularly like this. Nolan seemed to be having a lot of fun talking to me, and I enjoyed watching him. It was also good that he didn't know about my father, so I knew he wasn't approaching me for my father's money. Nolan said, I like Amelia. So will you marry me? When he said that, I felt like I was flying up to heaven. Of course, my answer was yes. 
When my husband visited my parents' house for the first time, he was so surprised that he lost his balance. My father and I both have many qualifications and hobbies, and the house is so large, with a large garden and a grand piano inside. I think he was surprised by the size of the house. When he asked me, are you a princess, Amelia? I smiled and exchanged that question. Before we talked about what happened to this mansion, we had to greet my parents in the living room. However, he was so nervous in the too large house that his tension was at its maximum. While he was nervous, he said, please give me your daughter. I couldn't help but laugh at him. My father and mother seemed to find out that he knew about my parents' house for the first time, so they allowed our marriage. Then I moved to a house with a workroom for telecommuting. There was also a theater room where Nolan and I could watch movies together, and we spent our holidays watching movies there. I thought our life was going well. Nolan went to work and I did housework during the day, and Nolan washed dishes and cleaned the bath after dinner. The shadow began to fall on our lives when we had been married for five years. He contacted me to say that he had been invited to drink with his boss that day, so I ate dinner alone, took a bath, and worked. Then, Nolan, who was drunk, came home at 11 p.m. He must have drunk a lot with his boss because he was lying down at the entrance while still drunk. I was surprised to smell the alcohol. He wasn't the type of person who drank that much, but when I said, let's go to bed for now, Nolan. You'll catch a cold if you sleep here, he said, half asleep and drunk, no, Hazel has to carry me. Who's Hazel? I was surprised. We've been married for five years, but there hasn't been a woman in his life. Besides, he said he didn't have a girlfriend until he started dating me, so I don't think he would have a girlfriend after we got married. Besides, he said he had been invited to drink with his boss today, so I shook my head to clear my doubts. I thought he wouldn't betray me. But the small seed of doubt remained in me. So I decided to consult my father. I see, he mentioned another woman's name when he was drunk. It may be too early to suspect him of cheating, but why don't you investigate it thoroughly if you're suspicious? My father said without getting emotional. If I was worried, I thought it would be better to prove his innocence and treat Nolan the same way as before. I hired a private detective. As a result of the report from the detective agency, I was further troubled. My father was amazed and said, break up with that man. To be honest, I thought about divorcing Nolan because I felt more pathetic than being cheated on. However, my father collapsed at that time. He passed away suddenly, and Nolan and I attended the funeral together. Many people who cared about my mother and me saw us off, and my father, who was a wealthy man, was sent off by many people. Finally, when the funeral was over and I went home and was making a warm coffee to take a break, Nolan asked me, how much money was in your father's account? What? Even though my father's funeral had just ended and only a few hours had passed, Nolan was not comforting me in my grief, but was concerned about the money in my father's account. But that's why I had been thinking about divorce recently. My father also told me to break up with that man. I decided in my heart to break ties with this man. There was four million dollars in it, I said. Nolan seemed uninterested, but I could tell he was fidgeting. How many years did he think we had been together? I don't think he approached me with that intention at first, but I knew he had been targeting the money of my father, who was a wealthy man, recently. That's why my father was wary of him. Normally, I wouldn't have told him the amount of my father's savings. However, I did so because I thought he would make a mistake. As expected, when I woke up the next day, Nolan was not in the house, and my cash card was gone. Instead, a divorce paper with his name already written on it was placed on the table. I confirmed that he was not in the house and locked the door with a chain while humming a tune. I wrote my name on the divorce paper. I felt relieved that I was finally free from the suspicion and anger towards Nolan. I sent Nolan's belongings to his parents' house and sent my belongings to my parents' house. I had been living at my parents' house originally, and now that my mother was alone, I decided to return to my parents' house. I decided to sell the house where I lived with him, completed the procedures, and moved out. It was about a week after Nolan left me. He came to my parents' house. 
He probably thought I was back home because there was a sign in front of our house that said a for sale. My mother and I were inside, so we decided to respond through the intercom without opening the gate for him. Then he had a cash card in his hand and said, there wasn't even $4 million in it. Did you just realize that now? Why did he steal my cash card in the first place? It is true that my father was a wealthy man who built up assets of $11 million. When he asked me how much was in my father's account, I answered, there was $4 million in it. Well, I didn't know exactly how much money was in the account, so I lied, but Nolan left with my cash card even though it was impossible for me to have my father's account at that time. Moreover, after I found out about Nolan's true nature, he took the cash card of an account that I had already stopped using and left it at home as a dummy. What were you going to do with that $4 million? Besides, that's my cash card. There's no way there's $4 million in it, I said. He grimaced and began to say, well, your father died. I thought I'd move the money from your father's account to your account right away, did you notice something? He didn't answer my question now. He talked about why he thought there was $4 million in my account, but he didn't say what he was going to do with that money. That's because he's hiding the reason he's going to use the money from me. I never thought he would do such a thing. Five years after we got married, he fell in love at first sight with a woman at a certain club where his boss took him. Her name was Hazel. She was a woman who worked at a nightclub. Nolan had a detective watching him, so I was well aware of his whereabouts after he left my house with my cash card. He went to the nightclub every day while staying at a business hotel. He thought he could use my father's money because my father had died, so he repeated his extravagance every day. Well, he seems to be a nuisance among the nightclub customers. As he said I was the first woman he dated, he seems to have fallen in love with Hazel, who was just entertaining customers at the nightclub because he had no experience with women. And he thought that Hazel listened to his story, watched the movies he recommended, and gave him feedback because she liked him. In fact, there are people who read a comic book, watch movies, and read novels to keep up with their customers' hobbies in order to increase their customers. Rather, it's better to say that they have a desire to improve their work. Hazel is also that type of person, so she seems to be popular at the club. However, Nolan seems to be trying to monopolize Hazel by coming to the club and ordering more expensive items than anyone else and calling Hazel to have her all to himself so that she won't be taken away by others. It would be better to be told that he was cheating on a woman. Then I can just claim damages from the woman and Nolan and get divorced. However, this time Nolan is just running wild alone, and Hazel seems to be the victim. Through the detective agency, I talked to Hazel about myself, and she wanted to talk to me, so we decided to talk at a quiet cafe for lunch. At that time, she said, I have no intention of dating customers. Rather, I feel like I'm being stalked. Recently, I've been waiting behind the club and being ambushed after work. I'm being driven home by male staff, so he don't know where I live, but it's scary, she was just working hard, but Nolan's rampage seemed to be threatening her life. I'm really disappointed in my husband. Moreover, Hazel advised me, please be careful too. He said he works for a major company, but he seems to be spending more money than his salary. I asked if he was okay, but he said that your father is a wealthy man, so I'll be able to spend money freely someday. At first, he wasn't the type of person who was obsessed with money, so he didn't care too much that my father was wealthy. However, since he fell in love with Hazel, he seems to have relied on my father's money to contribute to Hazel. I never thought that there would be someone who would change their mind halfway and become a person who is after money. I lost my affection for Nolan all at once. So I immediately submitted the divorce papers and decided to give up on him. And I came back to my parents' house to restrain him, who had come cunningly. If we divorce and end it, there is a possibility that he will follow Hazel. I can't bother her anymore. Nolan, you can't use my father's money freely in the first place. Huh? But if you inherit it, it's a joint savings or property division between husband and wife, right? Even if I inherit the estate, it won't be a joint property of the couple. Even with property division, you won't get my father's inheritance. Huh? Why not? Even if he asks why, it's just as I explained just now. 
It seems that he lost his head and couldn't think straight because he was running wild. I have decided to divorce you because I found out that you were bothering Hazel, who is just working and causing trouble. Do you know about Hazel? You're not going to get close to Hazel just because I love her, are you? Hazel is mine. She's not yours. And it seems that the club has banned you from entering. Huh? That's right, I think it's natural not to want to let a customer, a criminal who misused the fact that he works for a major company's accounting department to contribute to his favorite woman, into the club. He probably didn't think that it would be exposed. I added insult to injury to him, who was pale. I told your parents everything. Then your parents said they would leave everything to me. Huh? Leave it to you, but aren't you already divorced from me? Even if we're divorced, you have to take responsibility for emptying the joint savings of the couple. What do you mean by taking responsibility for emptying it? That's the money I earned. I sighed. You probably didn't know because you've never checked my account. I also saved money. A fixed amount every month. There's no way an at-home worker can earn that much. I'm a screenwriter. I write various scripts using my own experience and knowledge. I went on business trips, didn't I? He seemed to understand that what I was saying was not a lie, and he slumped on the spot. I judged that he had nothing more to say and asked the subordinates who my late father had requested to catch him. Then, Nolan was immediately restrained by men in black suits, put into a car, and taken away. He is going to a resort plan on an island where I am joining the development team with my late father. The island can only be reached by ferry twice a day and cannot be taken to the ferry to the mainland of the United States, so he will not leave the island until he pays all the embezzled money, the trouble fee for Hazel, and the club. He might have been better off giving his passion to another woman after judging what kind of person he was making an enemy of. There is no one to help him. I saw him off as he headed to the island with his subordinates on the ferry. At the very end, he apologized, saying, I'm sorry. Help me. But he was carried away by the ferry. While developing an island where I can experience various things with my late father, I will work harder than ever on my main job of writing scripts. Until now, I worked hard on housework for Nolan, but from now on, my mother said, leave the housework to me. I want to read Amelia's script more than that. So I want to work harder than ever. How was this story? Please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.